Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory to Jesus. In your life. That even when it is physical rainy season, you it is still great. dry season spiritually, financially, and otherwise. So I declare great. and declare, let the rain there begin to no fall. Else like let the rain begin to fall. There is no let one the rain else begin like you. You are great. There is no one else. Like Just lift your hands to heaven and ask God for a visitation. Ask him for a mighty outpouring tonight. Ask him for light. The Bible says that was the true light. That lighted every man. Go ahead and pray. Scripture declares and it says, For everyone that asketh, receiveth. It says, Ye have not because ye ask not. Ask him for light. Ask him for grace. Ask him for empowerment even tonight. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Um, I want to particularly thank those who are connected. There are so many people connected by way of internet. Um, and I want you to know that you are in for an experience with the Spirit of God. And for all of us who are here, my request is that we open up our hearts, not just to hear, but to receive so that we can become. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, but the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. It starts with knowledge, then transformation, be, then exploits, do. So it starts with knowing, then being, then doing. So the word of God comes to give us enlightenment. We are imparted and transformed by that light. Then his grace rests upon us to be able to manifest his power and manifest his grace. Spirit of the living God, help us tonight. And we vow that Jesus will be glorified in this place. Amen and amen. Please be seated. God bless you. Good to see everyone again. Tonight is our final session together, um, and I trust that it will be a life-transforming encounter. Again, I want to say a big thank you, Bishop. Thank you to you and your dear wife. Um, I want you to allow me just to steal out two or three minutes. I came with a dear friend, wonderful man of God who traveled all the way with me, and I just thought um, to allow him a minute or two just to bring greetings and to encourage our hearts. Would that be fine? Please help me welcome Reverend Akila, please. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Hallelujah. Please be seated. The big surprise. The temple, as we knew, to be had seven gates, and it was required when you entered the temple by one gate, you should leave by the other gate. And the clear message is the guarantee that when you come into God's presence, you never leave the way you came. So open your heart, whether you're online or right here, to understand you're in for a life-defining moment with the Spirit of the living God. And may his blessing be upon us all. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Um, I have two assignments tonight. 
and I trust God for grace to do justice to these assignments in the mighty name of Jesus. We began our discussion yesterday um, probing into our understanding of God's end time agenda. I began by telling us the emphasis of the spirit across the nations. Um, I'll still talk a bit on that. And then helping to define the various phases in the believer's journey. Still remember that the believer's journey starts with salvation, help me, transformation, and then empowerment. One more time. Salvation, uh huh. If you miss this step, something will be wrong with the quality of your Christian experience. The journey, the believer's journey, always starts with an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the Living God. More than an encounter with a pastor, more than an encounter with a church. Hallelujah. He said, this is the record, the testimony that God had given us eternal life and that this life is in his son such that he that hath the son hath life. Hallelujah. Okay, so um, there are two aspects that I want to deal with and then we pray. By the way, did you come with your prayer requests? Yeah. All right, so if you're yet to write yours, um, we would give you a minute or two later or not now so you're not distracted amen yesterday we looked at the rise and the transition of believers to become witnesses and tonight my focus is on territorial transformation I want us to understand how a territory is captured for Jesus if you do not understand this you will not be able to win your territory for Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to Acts chapter 26 and verse 19. Acts chapter 26 and verse 19. Paul is speaking before King Agrippa. And he makes a very profound statement that I want to start with tonight as we teach. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Uh-huh. So he was speaking to King Agrippa and he called it a heavenly vision. Please go back to, um, yes, 20. I'm not sure. Okay, that's fine. No problem. We'll just pick it from there. The God's end time program affects three groups of people. Three groups of people. Number one. God's end time agenda affects the world of sinners, the world of unbelievers. It's important for us to know um, the targets as far as God's program is concerned. Number one, God's end time agenda affects the world of sinners. These are the first people groups that were mandated to reach the world of sinners or the world of unbelievers. Number two, God's end time program affects the saints, believers. There is a mandate to affect positively and to influence the saints. And then number three, God's end time program affects societies, territories, and nations. It's important we have this orientation that when we talk about God's end time program, there are three categories of people that this should affect. Number one, the world of sinners, unbelievers. Number two, the saints, believers. Number three, territories, 
communities, societies, and nations. And if we fail to reach any of these people groups, it will affect the potency of that mandate. Hallelujah. Now, believers are not given the liberty or witnesses now to choose which of these. Every one of these groups should be affected by the gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit, and this grace that God has deposited upon our lives. The Great Commission, as we know, has brought a lot of confusion to the body of Christ. The average believer cannot articulate with intelligence what um, we call theologically the Great Commission. Many will talk about evangelism and stop there. But the Great Commission captures these three dimensions that I just explained. For many, even preachers, they understand the Great Commission uh, just to be evangelism. So they narrow the Great Commission to the world of sinners and they stop there. It's a very incomplete perspective. In fact, um, for you to understand the Great Commission, there are three scriptures you have to bring together. And if you isolate any one of these scriptures, it will not give you the complete picture of the Great Commission. Are we together? So let's consider the scriptures very quickly. Mark 16 from verse 15 to 20. Media, thank you for helping us again. Mark 16, thank you. And he said unto them, please pay attention, go ye into all the world. Notice the statement. He never said go around. He said go ye into. Into. Not two words. Into. Are we together? And preach the gospel not to men, to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned or condemned. Then whilst you do this, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, say amen. amen. They shall speak with new tongues, say amen again. Amen. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Amen. Reading to 20, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover even tonight. Amen. The Bible says, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. I like 20. He says, and they went forth in obedience to that mandate. They went forth and preached everywhere. Say everywhere. everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Scripture number two. Matthew chapter 28, from verse 18 to 20. I hope my mic is fine. Matthew 28, all right? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power. Well, um, let me just make an observation here. King James does not do justice um, to that word. The word there from the Greek is exousia. Is the word authority. All authority, okay? All authority is given unto me, uh -huh, in heaven and in the earth. And it says in light of that information, this is another aspect of the Great Commission. It says, go ye therefore. Now you notice Mark's account says, preach, declare, proclaim to every creature. Now, Matthew's account now says, in addition to preaching, there is the teaching ministry, and this is to all nations. Are we together? It says, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. This is beyond evangelism. This is discipleship. Are we together? Yes. And while you are doing that, I am also with you. So the Lord was walking with those preaching and declaring. The Lord was also walking with those 
mentoring and providing discipleship. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Are we together? Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Final scripture, Acts chapter 1, please. We're reading 6 to 11. Do you love scripture? Yeah. Right, so Acts chapter 1, 6 to 11. When they were come together, therefore they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times nor the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Read with me verse 8. Ready? One to read. But ye shall receive power. Hallelujah. Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Uh-huh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So in the book of Mark, you are sent to be preachers. In Matthew's account, you are sent to disciple nations. And in Acts chapter 1, you are sent to be witnesses, validators. You see that now? So, witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in all Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he spoke these things, they beheld him as he lifted and went to heaven. Now, when you put these scriptures together, they provide a holistic picture of God's idea of the Great Commission. So most times, and respectfully speaking, even theologians, they pick Mark's account and use it to construct their idea of the Great Commission. Then a few would delve to Matthew's account, and then others would just narrow it down to Acts. You now see from these expressions that the Great Commission involves preaching, involves teaching and discipleship, and it, it involves practical demonstration. Are we together? If you lose this understanding, you will not live an effective life as a witness. Now write this down, please. What is the Great Commission? I'll read and I'll request that you write. The Great Commission is a mandate given by Jesus Christ. A mandate given by Jesus Christ to the disciples and now to all believers. I'll dictate patiently because I need you to write this. The Great Commission is a mandate given by Jesus Christ to then the disciples and now to all believers to reach the entire globe. Am I too fast? I'll take it again. A mandate given by Jesus to the disciples and now to all believers to reach the entire globe with the gospel of salvation. To reach the entire globe with the gospel of salvation. Put a comma there. Next. To bring all nations to the knowledge of the truth through discipleship. To reach the entire globe with the gospel of salvation to bring all nations to the knowledge of the truth through discipleship and then to consequently bring territorial and societal transformation and then to consequently bring about territorial and societal transformation. Don't worry, I'll still read one more time. So the Great Commission is a mandate given by Jesus Christ to the then disciples and now to all believers to reach, number one, reach the entire globe with the gospel of salvation. Number two, to bring all nations to the knowledge of the truth through discipleship. 
And then number three, to consequently bring about territorial and societal transformation. If you have this definition, then you understand God's idea. This is the Great Commission, and this is also what we call God's end time agenda. Are we together? Yeah. So immediately you see and you learn that, like I shared yesterday, there are three components to the Great Commission, not one. I'm recapping that which I said yesterday. Number one, world evangelization. Remember? So this affects the world of sinners. World evangelization. To ensure that if possible, every one sinner left on earth, that he comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Number two, discipleship. That is the biblically recommended pathway to transformation. Discipleship, the word discipleship is very important because it's, it's really an old expression of the word mentorship. It's the strategy that turns a student to have to be of stature like the lecturer or like the mentor. Are we together? Yes. This is very important. Discipleship. And then number three, which is my emphasis tonight, territorial or societal transformation. Let me tell you this. If you are a man of God, if you are a pastor here, and you want to serve the purposes of God effectively, it's important for you to understand that this is the jurisdiction of your mandate. Are we together? That there is an aspect of your mandate to reach the world of sinners, there is an aspect of your mandate to mentor, mature, and build believers. Then there is an aspect of your mandate to influence systems and structures. To bring territories, to help them adopt the value system of the kingdom. I did say yesterday that there is the gospel as a message that saves. But there is the gospel as a value system that transforms society. I was at Plymouth earlier today and we had the opportunity to go around what the monument of the, what do you call that? Monument of the forefathers. I was so inspired, you have no idea. Because that, that, that I believe is a representation of the spirit of America. The convictions that built your nation. It impacted me so much, I kept thinking all through as we drove back. It's important for you to understand the spirit of the gospel, God's mandate, God's intent, God's drive. If you ignore the unbelieving world, there's something you are doing wrong. If you save the unbelieving world and you ignore the maturity of the saints, there's something you are doing wrong. If we do well in church, falling down, rolling, and we leave society without the influence of the kingdom, we're still doing something wrong. This is the apostolic dimension to Christianity. Lot was a godly man, but Sodom and Gomorrah was a godless place. And he still paid the price even though he was a righteous man. It matters that our territories, are we together? That they adopt the value system of the kingdom. Lot was about to lose his daughters because he was a righteous man in a bedeviled society. So it matters that our territories also conform to the value system of the kingdom. Do you know that all the laws that we try to enact in the parliament, everything that tries to help people become civil and decent is a human attempt to produce Christ in men. Even though we will not admit that that is the mission. But it is an attempt to produce Christ in men. So we use all kinds of laws and policies to help shape their behavior so that they behave the best that they can be. But that's exactly why he gave us the word and he gave us the Holy Spirit. Are we learning now? So it's important for us to understand the Great Commission. My life changed when I understood this. I travel extensively and by the grace of God, I am all about these three. If you ever find me ministering, 
the word. I'm ministering to the world of sinners. I'm maturing the saints through mentorship and discipleship. Or I'm raising and training witnesses to penetrate systems and structures, influencing them with the value system of the kingdom. Hallelujah. This will help your prayer. So when you are praying for a revival, you have an idea of what you see. Most believers are not intelligent in their approach to spiritual things. We're just emotional. So when you are asking God to move, we do not even understand what we're saying he should do. What does it mean to move? What does it mean to create an awakening? Now your, your understanding has been constructed. When you cry for a revival, you are saying, Lord, visit the world of sinners. Let every sinner be captured and be turned to the saint. Let every saint rise to a point of stature and maturity to take their place in destiny. When you pray for the saints, you are praying that there be a transition from being a believer to being a witness. Only witnesses can fulfill the great commission, not believers. So there has to be that transition from a believer to a witness. A witness is a validator of a claim. Many of you here are, you know, maybe lawyers or practitioners of the law. You do not need a witness in the court of law until there is a contention over a matter. Am I right on that? And then the judge would say, bring your witness. And every witness comes with an evidence. So when Jesus sends us as witnesses... There are many statements that Satan has made upon the earth using men. He's attempted to describe God as unfaithful. He's attempted to describe God as limited. Do you know that every sickness, every, every negative occurrence in the lives of men is a letter Satan is trying to write indicting the integrity of God? So he sends you for every healing. It's more than a demonstration that a man is powerful. It's a reply from heaven through men. I am still faithful. I am still mighty. When the barren receive children, it's beyond an endorsement that a man of God is anointed. It is God using men to write that I can still be depended upon. That means God is counting upon you, counting upon me, to rewrite certain things. Are we together now? Yeah. The Great Commission. For many of us, we've been ineffective as far as representing the purposes of God is concerned. And the reason is that many have been saved. But like I said yesterday, we have not contended for the principles that help us to become matured believers. God cannot trust us with his mandate in experience when we are still children. Void of understanding, void of stature in the spirit. There are certain assignments that cannot be given to us until we attain unto a state of maturity. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, an heir, for as long as he is a child, he differeth not from a slave, even though he be lord of all. It takes maturity to be trusted. Are we together? It says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon the shoulder of the son, not the child. Not the child. Are we together? Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. The Bible says, Jesus, your Jesus increased. Wow. Jesus increased. Increased in wisdom. Increased in stature. Increased in favor with God and man. Until he attained that state of maturity where he could be trusted with the destiny of mankind to redeem through death. Hallelujah. And so it's important for us to know that God desires for us to attain unto maturity. And now I want to give you three keys. Three keys that can help the believer attain unto maturity. And then I'll talk about one other aspect and we'll pray. Is God helping us already? Three keys. 
my God. For someone who you walk out of this place as a sign and a wonder already. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to give you three keys that can transit any believer from a weak spiritual state until you become a person of power and a person of grace. Are you ready? Number one, the first key is called a systemic prayer life. The first key that builds believers to become people of power and stature in the spirit a systemic prayer life. Notice the expression systemic. If your prayer life is not systemic, it will be ineffective and it will be void of the ability to build you. Systemic. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible tells us that Peter and John were on their way to the temple to pray at the hour of prayer. Please say that after me. The hour of prayer. One more time. The hour of prayer. There was a discipline that was invested to their prayer life. It was called the hour of prayer. Dedicated to prayer. The hour of prayer. Most believers pray. But aside from praying amiss, we are not consistent in our prayer. We have an emotional approach to prayer. So when matters get bad and it looks like we're in trouble, we quickly develop some kind of crash system and we shout at the gates of heaven. And once it looks like there's a little solution, then we leave everything. Your prayer life, the power in prayer is in its consistency. Especially when we're talking about prayer as a tool for building you. I'll talk a bit on prayer. It's important we understand this. The key to benefiting from prayer is to create a strategy for consistency. The key to benefiting from prayer is to create a strategy for consistency. Most believers are not consistent in their prayer. Can I give you four assignments of prayer? Maybe you want to write that down. According to scripture, there are four assignments of prayer. Number one, the first assignment of prayer is for growth and transformation. This is the most important assignment of prayer. Did you know that the average believer's understanding of prayer is just as a means for receiving things from God? The major assignment of prayer is as a tool for your personal growth and transformation. Luke chapter 9, please, and verse 29. Are we learning? That means a major part of your prayer should not just be about asking things but engaging for your spiritual development. This is why he gave us the prayer language. As he prayed, we're still together, the fashion of his countenance was altered. Talk to me. And his raiment became white and glistening. This is what happened to Jesus as he prayed. This is what will happen to any believer as you pray. As he prayed, the fashion of his countenance transformation a weak you can become a strong you when you pray a timid you a carnal you can become a spiritual you you can pray out weakness pray out limitation most believers have not used prayer as a tool for their development Show me a man who has been methodically mentored to understand the ministry and the role of prayer in his development and has obtained grace to engage. I show you a powerful Christian in the making. Now, I hope you know that when the disciples of John became the disciples of Jesus, they noticed that Jesus' prayer produced power. 
And they came to him and said, teach us to pray. Their issue was not prayerlessness. Their issue was that there was no power in their prayer. Everything he said came to pass. What was he saying? What was he doing? You must spend a major part of your prayer life praying in the spirit when you want to grow. Listen carefully. You must spend a major part of your prayer time praying in the spirit. Most believers do not use prayer as a tool for growth and transformation. It says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But in Acts chapter 2, they received a prayer language, not power. That means there is a relationship between that prayer language and the promised power. Am I right on that? If I tell you that I'm bringing you a hot meal, and I bring you, say, a blue gift, it means you must open to find out there must be a connection between that gift I gave you and the promise I left you. Probably the meal must be inside. Am I wrapped? Are we together? If I promise you a thousand dollars and then I hand over a bag, it is only wise to open that bag because the thousand dollars will most likely be in there as cash, as some voucher, as a check. Am I right on that? So if Jesus says you will receive power and what you receive was tongues, you, there has to be a relationship between engaging that prayer language and the release of power. Hallelujah. Listen. I'm saying this because I'm going to give you an assignment in righteousness. You are going to work with the Holy Spirit to create a systemic pattern of consistent prayer from tonight. Yeah. Believe me, you work this for one month, two months, three months, praying consistently every day for the purpose of edification and growth and watch the wonder you become. Do you believe this? Yeah. So the first assignment of prayer is as a tool for growth and transformation. Number two, the second assignment of prayer is as a platform for obtaining requests and making petitions. Obtaining requests and making petitions. Obtaining requests and making petitions. God is Father. God is a giver. We can obtain requests. We can make petitions. Mark chapter 11, please, and verse 24. Here's what the Bible says. And what things soever ye desire. Is that in your Bible? It says, when ye pray. So there is a relationship between desires and prayer. It says, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Desire, prayer, believing, receiving, having. Desire, prayer, believing in prayer, receiving in prayer, having in experience. This is a dynamics. So prayer is a tool for making petitions and obtaining requests. The Bible even says, ask, Matthew 7, 7, and you shall receive. Is that still in your Bible? Seek and you will find. Knock, it says, and it shall be opened unto you. I like verse 8. For everyone. Prayer is for everyone. For everyone, not some. Everyone that asketh in prayer receiveth. It says, ye have not because ye ask not. Are we still together? So assignment number one of the prayer ministry is for your growth, edification, and transformation. Number two, as a tool, a platform to obtain requests and to make petitions. Ready for number three? The third assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is as a tool for creating your reality. Prayer, when in combination with the spoken word, helps the believer create their reality. 
I like this. The Bible says, even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not. I hope you know that the believer is a co-creator with God. You are given the responsibility of designing your destiny using the creative power of the spoken word in prayer. This must form a major part of your prayer life. Not just to ask, speak, son of man, can these bones live? He says, only thou knowest. And then he said, prophesy. Speak to someone, say prophesy. prophesy. One more time, say prophesy. prophesy. Hmm. Now, isn't it interesting that the Holy Spirit told Ezekiel what to say? The bones had what the Holy Spirit was saying and they did not move until Ezekiel spoke. I prophesied as I was commanded, he said, and there was a sound. So every time we prophesy in prayer, there is a sound. A sound, a sound, a sound, a sound of healing, a sound of restoration, a sound of revival, a sound of mending bones. Now listen, you would look at a valley, a valley that was full of bones. You would see the one bone here, the other bone there, the possibility for order was still there, even in the midst of chaos, but not under every condition. The moment the prophet prophesied, the bone came from everywhere to everywhere. The bone can mean the problem. The bone can mean whatever you desire, connecting itself until there arose an exceeding great army. Can I tell you, you do not know the kind of power you have as far as shaping your possibilities and creating your destiny is concerned until you know how to use scripture with the intelligence of an artist, you begin to draw your possibilities. Have you watched an artist paint? From nothing. Swiping the brush left to right at various angles. Not making sense at the beginning. Sometimes inverting the picture. Ah, and then when he's done, he turns it back. This is your destiny. So when you begin to make declarations like the Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall I be afraid of? Are we together now? Yes, sir. The psalmist said, I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustain me. A thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side, but none shall harm me. With my eyes will I see and behold the reward of the wicked. The Bible says, they that be planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. That in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. That is my destiny. That is your assignment in the place of prayer. To use the spoken word and push it with faith and begin to redefine your possibilities. When men say there is a casting down, for me, my declaration is that there is a lifting up. Yes, sir. Believe this. This is how kings reign. He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. I'm planted in the house of God. I flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, I am fat and flourishing. No devil would take my life before my time. In the name of Jesus, I have a covenant of life. Did the Bible not say if they obey and serve him, they will spend their years in prosperity, their days in prosperity, their years in pleasure? I expect to be favored in any nation regardless my background because the Bible says, watch this, it says, let them shout for joy. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. It is in my Bible that I am blessed in the city blessed not just in Nigeria I am blessed in America I define my possibilities listen I'm teaching you how believers become matured I cannot be rejected not by any nation not by any people group the hand of God is upon my life I have the covenant of Abraham walking in me it says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed this is what I believe. 
this is my reality listen now do you believe this now you see the requirement for prophecy is a thorough understanding of the promises of God you cannot speak prophetically in ignorance because God is only committed to what he has said not what you want it is only when your desire becomes what God has said that it looks like God is answering you you see what God is answering is not really your desire He's honoring his word that you have found and connected to your desire. Because in this kingdom, if God has not spoken, his anointing has no ministry. The assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word does not become a lie in your life. Genesis 21 and verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. God only visits as he has said. He only does as he has spoken. Did you get that? So if he has not said it, and if you cannot find where he has said it, there is no big for performance in your life. The third ministry of prayer. Is someone learning? I refuse to be defeated. Not when I have this advantage in my life. No, no. No. I define my possibilities. I don't wait for life to happen to me. That is a dangerous adventure. I can't risk my life. I have just one lifetime. I'm not going to put one lifetime at the mercy of wicked people, wicked systems. No. Job already taught us a lesson by being silent. I would be silent. I have to participate in every outcome that happens in my life. No devil will make any discussions and then I become a victim of operations of spirits and territorial powers. No. No. Discussions were concluded about Job and the Bible says on a certain day. The third assignment of prayer. You see that for many of you, your life has gone inconsistent with your desires because you are just allowing life to just happen no when you leave a farm without planting something will grow what is it called Weed. one more time Weed. we define weeds in agriculture as unwanted plants at least with respect to your farm unwanted hmm. unwanted Every tree that has not been planted by my father, it is my responsibility to uproot it. Are we together? So you find out that you're roaming over Boston and looks like doors are closed. Everyone hates you. Come on. Don't go around attracting sympathy. Lock yourself. You have an advantage. The prayer ministry. You pray in the spirit and you stretch your hands like the priest that you are and begin to make prophetic scripture based declarations. Here's what the Bible says. Is anyone afflicted? James 5.13. It says, let him pray. Now watch this. Then it says, let him call for the elders of the church. My goodness, I like this. Watch this. It says, and let them pray. Help that person under the anointing. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Read verse 15 and never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. The prayer of faith shall save the sick hold on and by the power of prayer the lord shall raise him up prayer raises men up the lord shall raise him up through the prayer of faith raise him up from a nobody and put you in a global scale do you believe this listen do not let contemporary society Make it look like prayer is just an activity of fanatical Christians. You would be doing your destiny a disservice. Prayer. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So number one, 
praying in the spirit for your edification, growth, and transformation. Number two, using scripture-based prayer as a basis for obtaining requests and making petitions. Unto thee that answers prayer, the Bible says, shall all flesh come. Number three, creating possibilities in your life is like an art of legislating things. You are enacting laws in the spirit and establishing them. The Bible says, where the word of a king is, there is power. It says, declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Don't be silent. Mm -mm. Give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem as a praise. Number four, the fourth and final assignment of prayer is for warfare and prophetic intercession. I hope you believe in warfare. <laughs> Let me define for you what I call warfare. Warfare is a prophetic system of establishing the word of God and establishing the will of God over lives, destinies, and territories. Warfare is concerned not just with fighting, but establishing realities that have been finished, making them manifest through the force of intercession. I'm going to be teaching you that because this is how you will take your territory. All the other aspects, excellence, leadership, value, you already have it. That missing ingredient is what I came to show you. We are learning from you the other aspects because we've gotten warfare and intercession well. Then we've left excellence, we've learned leadership, and so we are coming to borrow that. But in exchange, we're importing to you how to exert dominion upon territories using the power of priesthood. Elijah stood in one place, not in a radio station, not in a TV station, and he shot down rain. Listen, if you learn what I'm about to show you tonight, the spiritual forces that trouble the purposes of God over Boston will be in trouble after tonight. You see, Daniel was an intelligent leader. And Daniel understood the power of prayer. Now, before the king, he was a valuable person, excellent, intelligent, an administrator. The Bible says he had an excellent spirit. But... All that was strengthened because of his prayer. So the spirits of the Medes and the Persians, they needed to investigate what was responsible for this man's excellence and dexterity in life. They traced it to his prayer. Can you imagine that these spirits moved through men to enact one law against one man for just 30 days? They came through the angle of politics and governance to say for the next 30 days, no man would offer prayer to any God king. Sign this. And if anyone were found doing that, he would be thrown to the lion's den. The Bible says, Daniel opened the window. <laughs> Do you know why he opened the window facing Jerusalem? Because when Solomon was dedicating the temple, he entered a covenant with God that everyone who faced Jerusalem offering prayer that the Lord should hearken to them. And Daniel began to pray, and when they found him, they threw him at the lion's den, you know the story, and he refused to die. <laughs> I didn't say he didn't die. He refused to die. If life is a choice, then death. Are we together? You want to become a powerful believer? You must pray. Say in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to pray. One more time. In the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to pray. Can you pray in the spirit in one minute before we continue? In the name of Jesus.
I obtain grace to pray. I obtain grace to pray. I obtain grace to pray. Prayerlessness, you let me go in the name of Jesus. Prayerlessness, you let me go in the name of Jesus. Obtain grace. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, very quickly. The second secret for becoming a mighty man in the spirit is to be built by the word. Invest in the word of God. Invest in the ministry of the word. Prayer is powerful, but prayer without an understanding of the word will leave you only practicing religious superstition. What gives power to prayer is the word compliancy of your prayer. Did you hear that? What gives power to prayer is that it is scripture-based, word compliant, and consistent with the will of God. In fact, here's how the Bible puts it, that this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything in accordance to his will, we know that he heareth us. So when you pray amiss, regardless the kind of energy you dissipate, there is a guarantee that it will not be answered. Hmm. Are we together? Many believers pray and we do not get answers because we just pray emotionally, superstitiously, we just shout around and yet our prayer is not consistent with scripture. The modus operandi in this kingdom is the word. How things happen is by the word. God's method has always been his word. His method to lift, his word. His method to restore, his word. His method to bless, his word. The moment you ignore the word of God and try to get God's result, you are not a Christian again. The only way God's result comes to you is in compliance to his word. Now, the Bible essentially contains promises, principles, and prophecies. Never forget this. Every time you study your Bible, you are interacting with this three realm of realities. Principles, promises, God's commitment to you. Principles, the modus operandi of the kingdom. Prophecies, guiding you to navigate your path through life and destiny. Are we together? Did you get that? So when you open your Bible, you're interacting with promises. The Bible calls them exceeding great and precious promises. You're interacting with principles. The Bible calls them the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew 13, 11. It has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And then you're interacting with prophecy. Most believers do not invest in the word. Listen, let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. You must obtain grace to study the word of God. Why do you need to study the word of God? Because it is important for you to know what God has said. That is the basis of your victory. Even Satan functions by knowing what God has said. He depends on what God has said to you to attack you. Go to the book of Genesis. When he came to man, his first interest was not to attack. What did God say? Because that becomes the basis for my attack. The way Satan fashions weapons is that the weapons have to be anti-Christ, anti-scripture. Are we together? He needs to know what God has told you. Okay, God has said you're going to become a great woman. That becomes the basis of his attack. God has said your third son will be a prophet. He will make sure you get barren at that third pregnancy. Satan only attacks with respect to the speakings of God's word. So if you see Satan coming around your vicinity, it's proof he's aware that the word has reached you. Even if you are not aware. His presence is confirmation that the word of God has come to you. That's why he's called the thief. What is he coming to steal? You think he comes to your life to steal things? Oh, no. 
things only leave because the word left. John 1, 3. All things were made by him, the word. And without him was not anything made that was made. Am I right on that? Yeah. This is powerful. That means if you give yourself to the study of scripture, Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, it says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, it says, and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. You must damage spiritual ignorance from your life. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds. You need knowledge. Say knowledge. knowledge. Please shout it. Say knowledge. knowledge. Now, knowledge. That was the true light. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, arise, shine. Why? That is the only reason why you will arise. Because your light has come. Not because you are tired of staying in that state. Time does not change anything. It only reveals the consequences of your decisions. If you want things to change, you must bring light. John 1, 5. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Let me quote Isaiah 60 and verse 1 from Amplified. Beautiful rendition. Here's what it says. Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. Hmm. Are we together? Now listen. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, the creation story, that God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Walk with me. He called the light and the darkness he called one more time. He called the light and the darkness he called. So in God's economy, the day is not 6 a.m., 12 a.m., 3 a.m. The day is not when the sun shines. The day for you is when your light comes. Are we together? So you can chronologically, as we call it, you can be at noon. And yet you are still in the night. And the Bible says with the night comes weeping. So when you want to end your night, you don't wait for the sun to rise. You bring light. Because it is only joy is connected with light, connected with the morning. Are we learning now? He called the light day and the darkness he called so for many of us, the sun, as we know it and as we call it, um, the layman's understanding, rising and setting, rising and setting. But in the realm of the spirit, you've never really had day. It's always been night because light has not come. And for someone, you may be living in the night and yet your experience is that of the day because of the abundance of the light. Listen, go back to the word. What has God said concerning your health? What has he said concerning your finances? What has he said concerning your influence? Are we together? The Bible says in Psalm 82 and verse 5, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But verse 7 says, you shall die like mere men, and fall like one of the princes. I made a covenant with my destiny years ago that I would not be ignorant of the word. I knew my life depended on it. I found your word and I did eat it. It became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Please invest in scripture. I cursed the spirit of laziness spiritually. Are we together? Wake up in the night and open your Bible. There are three ways to maximize the ministry of the word. Number one, study it. Number two, confess it. Number three, listen to it. You have to study the word. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. 
then listen to it. Faith comes by hearing. Get materials. And we, we, we live in an age where it is, it is so easy. There's, there's all kinds of devices. There are the speakings of Jesus. Faith confessions on healing. Faith confessions on your destiny. All you need to do is go online and pick it up. You don't, I mean, they've saved you the, the, the labor of piecing them together. My phone is full of all kinds of scriptures. And sometimes while I'm praying, I let it play. I may not be conscious, but it's entering into my spirit. I'm not listening for awareness. I'm transporting it to my spirit. Are you learning? So you study scripture, you listen to scripture, and you speak. Don't miss the speaking part. You're not maximizing the ministry of the word if you are silent. Let the redeemed of the Lord, let the healed of the Lord, let the blessed of the Lord, let the great by the Lord, let the children of the Lord, let the witnesses of the Lord. It matters that you say so. The righteousness that is of faith speaks. It is not silent. Say so. Say so. I am blessed. Say so. Anointed by the Spirit. Say so. Hmm. Number three. The third key to becoming mighty in the Spirit is that you must contend for spiritual empowerment. You must contend for spiritual empowerment. Is God helping us tonight? You want to be witnesses. You want to be men and women of stature. This was the apostolic model that was handed over to the church. It is not something to alter. It is a pattern. It will not change. The ministry of prayer, in all its ramifications, the ministry of the word, studying the word, speaking the word, listening to the word to feed your spirit man, then now, you come to the place of the anointing. Are we together? Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good. Someone say doing good. Doing good. One more time say doing good. doing good. It takes more than a kind heart to do good. It takes more than empathy and compassion to do good. You need to be anointed to do good. Doing good. And healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. The Bible says, for God was with him. The Messianic prophecy, Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, it says. For the Lord hath anointed me. And now it begins to list. To preach glad tidings to the poor. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Look at the category of people to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison. This is very interesting. That means there are men who seem to be free physically, but in the realm of the spirit, they are in prison. All kinds of prisons. To them that are bound. Let's finish the scripture, verse 2. The Bible says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, all by the anointing and the day of vengeance of our God. Verse 3, to comfort all who mourn by the anointing, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion by the anointing, to give them beauty for ashes, my God, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise, still by the anointing, for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees or the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I receive, I manifest, you know the song? Your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus. Lifted up, exalted, I receive, I manifest. That's your destiny. 
your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life listen I don't have the time to tell you how this prophetic song came it's become an, an anthem in our ministry it's the richest capture a definition of our assignment at its core. The anointing becomes for us the power of God and the wisdom of God. You want to reveal Christ? You need the wisdom of God and the power of God. If you have power alone, the cosmos will drag you. The anointing can translate to wisdom and translate this is why we can deliver a lecture in the afternoon and heal the sick in the night. Wisdom, power, wisdom, power, wisdom, power. Are we together? Yes. Let me talk about one aspect and then we'll pray. I sense a staring in this place already. I want to teach you on the power of prophetic intercession. A few minutes and then we'll begin to pray. I have taught you the three requirements for transiting from an ordinary believer to become a person of stature. The ministry of prayer, the ministry of the word, and the ministry of the anointing, empowerment. But I need to teach you how to take territories. Now, there are many factors that are responsible for territorial dominion. The spirituality is one of them. Then value and productivity. Then leadership. Then influence. Then wealth. All of these are principles that help in territorial transformation and exerting the dominion of the kingdom over territories. But my emphasis tonight is to show you how to save your spiritual climate using the power of priesthood. Prophetic intercession. In Ezekiel chapter 22 from verse 30 and 31 for sake of time. My God. I sought for a man among them, even in Boston, please go back. I sought for a man that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap. Yes, go ahead. Before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Prophetic intercession is one of the ancient mysteries by which territories come under the governing influence of God. Ordinary men are able to take their territories when they understand the power of prophetic intercession. History, including your history, is full of ordinary men who spearheaded moves of God, awakenings across territories. They had no comeliness. You wouldn't see them very unassuming people but they understood the power of prophetic intercession. The Bible describes in Luke 18 a judge who neither feared God nor respected men. And then the Bible talks about a frail, helpless widow who kept coming to him and said, avenge me my adversary. And the Bible says for a while he would not attend to her. And then the man had this to say, that though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet this woman by her continual coming, that she is able to weary me. There is a mysterious power 
that consistent prayer and prophetic intercession exerts upon the spiritual climate of a territory. Are we together now? Subduing the forces that manipulate the minds of men. Let me tell you how spirits operate. Demon spirits and wicked spirits are in cadres. They are not all doing the same thing. It was Paul who gave us an intelligent understanding of the organogram of the satanic kingdom. He talks about rulers, uh, powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, and so on and so forth. Now, there are demon spirits assigned to every region and every territory. Let me tell you the assignment. Number one, to stop the advancement of God's program. But number two, to become strongholds that latch upon the thinking of the people so that they make the word of God of non effect. It is these spirits that are called familiar spirits. They are familiar because they've been at the territory for a long time and they are responsible for programming thought patterns so that father becomes irresponsible like grandfather, son becomes irresponsible. You see that? They culture you to behave in a certain way that keeps programming and maintaining tragedies. Listen carefully. I don't have all the time, but I hope grant, God will grant grace another time that will be able to teach you this. Most believers are in ignorance. Things do not just happen. People don't just start to hate within a territory. They are made to hate. People just, they don't just become violent at their children, at their parents. No. The human by default is not that wicked. They are engineered by spirits. Sent over territories. Every city and every, every region in America, as it is across the globe, has spirits with defined assignment. I can tell you by spiritual intelligence the kinds of spirits operating over Boston because Boston is a region with profound secular enlightenment. And when spirits come there, there is a way they operate. They will ride through your intellect and make you fight spirituality. This is how they operate. If they come to Africa, a region where the, their intellectual growth is very low, they just need to introduce superstition because of the obsession to worship something. They are not, the strategy is defined by the prevalent mindset. So they build a stronghold. You know what a stronghold is? A stronghold is a faulty mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim thinking that way. So when you see things that don't make sense in your nation, stop being intellectual about it. There are spirits. You get what I'm saying? There are spirits. I tell you there are spirits. Now, until the saints rise, this is what Satan hates. I can tell you Satan hates what you are hearing now. There was a man called a madman in Gadara. Do you know that the destiny of that man was to be an evangelist? And Satan scanned through the entire Decapolis and found the person who had the key to the liberty of that land and made him a madman. That man became a madman. It was the demons did not just enter any man. They picked a man whose prophetic destiny had been seen and kept that man. It was because of that one man, Jesus went to the other side. One man. Why would Jesus go to the other side just to meet one man and then return back? That one man was equal the destiny of 10 people. So some of the attacks you are seeing in your life that does not make sense. Let me remind you, when Satan attacks you, he looks beyond you. He's seen an army standing before, behind you. You have an assignment to reach them. The barrenness of Elizabeth was not about Elizabeth. It was about the prophet who will ordain the Savior.
when Moses was born, many innocent children died. Why did they die? Because there was a prophetic word from the Garden of Eden that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. And right from Cain killing Abel, right until Jesus came, it's been Satan's campaign to search the seed. The day he found out a covenant people who the seed will come through called Israel, there was war. Israel never found peace again because he now knew that, well, I don't know the seed, but I know the region where that seed will come from. That was why when John showed up, the spirit of the Antichrist began to speak through the scribes and the Pharisees. Are you the one who should come? John kept confusing them. I am the voice of one Christ. What is, are you the one? <laughs> because the protocol for the move of God is that Elijah must always forerun Jesus. Everywhere you see the manifestation of Jesus, you will have to see the spirit of Elijah first. So Elijah came in the spirit and the power, John, in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Then Jesus came. Everywhere you're about to see a revival and the spirit of Elijah is a spirit of prayer and is a spirit of restoration and is a spirit of judgment. Are we learning? So there are controlling powers over Boston. My dear people, as beautiful as your wonderful city is, I want to tell you from the authority of scripture that there are real demons roaming around the length and the breadth of your streets at the mercy of the understanding and the dominion of the saints. So when a husband suddenly turns to hate his wife, he did not just hate her. That hatred caught see the diligence of these spirits at work. When an intelligent student begins to suffer academically without explanation, when your helpers suddenly hate you and do not want to see you, listen, nothing just happens. Say that after me. Nothing just happens. One more time. Nothing just happens. People do not just hate you. No. Doors do not just close. No. They are spirits. What is your assignment now to understand prophetic intercession? Write a few things about it and then we'll begin to pray. Hmm. I wish I had the time I would have shown you men in the Bible who interceded for others. In Genesis 18, Abraham interceded for Lot. Remember? God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and Abraham said, hold on, I have an interest there. I have an interest. He advocated through intercession. He saved Lot. Jesus himself interceded for Peter. Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And that when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. The early church in Acts chapter 12, when Herod bound Peter, remember? The Bible says they beheaded James and he saw that it pleased the people. And he caught Peter waiting that after the Passover he would bring him before them. And the Bible says, but prayer was made unto the church, unto God by the church for him. And an angel came. The same angel that rescued Peter would have rescued James if the church prayed. Because the angels were not sent to particular individuals, they were sent to all believers. Something must have happened to the carelessness of the church. It was after the, the death of James, they stood up and they said, we will not allow that to happen to Peter. Don't allow things just happen. If you leave Satan, he will steal, he will kill, he will destroy. Did you hear that? He's called a thief. A thief is not a friend. Now, principles of prophetic intercession. Let me just give you very quickly. The intercessory ministry is founded on two principles. Please write this down. The intercessory ministry is founded upon two principles. Number one, the law of love for God and for people. The intercessory ministry is founded upon two principles. Number one, the law of love for God and for people. If you do not love the Lord, 
and you do not love people, you cannot be a prophetic intercessor. You have to love God and love people. The second principle is called the principle of shared dominion. Psalm 115 verse 16. Why do we intercede? Because of this principle called the principle of shared dominion. 115 16 Psalms. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. It says, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. You know what that means? Nothing happens on earth without the cooperation and the participation of men. God is almighty, but he's limited his operation on the earth until he finds a man who cooperates with him. So God seeks men. He's vulnerable and he says it, I sought for a man. In Isaiah chapter 6, who shall go for us? God is still seeking for men in Boston. Still seeking for men in America. Are we together? There's a lot that God wants to do. There are destinies he wants to rewrite, but he's looking for men. Someone said, send me. Send One more time, shout it, say send me. Send me. Hmm. The law of love. The law of love. You have to discern and understand the controlling powers that are within your region. How do you know the controlling powers? Look at the prevalent behaviors of the people within your territory. It gives you an idea of the spirits that control them. When you see a widespread manifestation of irresponsibility, as we have it in Africa, sometimes you find out that there's a spirit that causes untimely death. People never cross beyond a certain age. Parents always have to bury their children. It should not be. You see that? And then you find certain families where the women become the men and the men become the women in terms of capacity to provide. When you see the behaviors of people, you can deduce the operation of the spirits that are there. And then your next assignment is to engage. Engage with scripture. Engage in prayer. Engage with scripture. Get the map of Boston to your house. Get the map of Boston to your house. Place it on the ground. Intercede. Let revival come. Raise prophets, O oh God. Raise apostles. Get the picture of Harvard. Your lovely university. Place it on the ground. Father, raise witnesses from Harvard. As lecturers, as students. Oh, Cambridge. 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 Cambridge, huh? Boston, Cambridge. Cambridge. Okay. Okay. So, Cambridge. There's Boston here. Okay, America. Are we together? But you get the map, whether it's Boston or Cambridge, Harvard, or your family, get that map there and pray. Listen, let me tell you this. I wish I had time to tell you my story. If you know where I came from, you will know that intercession, prophetic intercession is powerful. Did you know that literally one spirit can stop the various areas of your life from manifesting? Your finances, your health, your relationships. You know how an octopus is? Yeah. All of the tentacles touching the various aspects of your life but one and the same spirit. So when you dislodge that spirit, you will find out that doors just open because it's been the one spirit. Now, you believe what I'm telling you. All of a sudden, doors of relationships open. Doors of finances open. Yes, this is how Satan operates. Prophetic intercession is powerful. Begin to form prayer chains. Begin to form prayer networks of serious people with understanding. You invest in prayer, you'll begin to see a physical reaction across your territory. Pray. 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 Connect with your loved ones even online and tell them, listen, I've found the cure 
to this demonic thing plaguing our family, prophetic intercession. I found it. Connect to them, whether they're in London, America, Asia, Nigeria, Africa. Connect and pray. Pray. Prayer is connected to the healing of the land. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turning from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, the Bible says, and I will forgive their sin and also heal their land. Hallelujah. You need to pray. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Let me tell you this. When we moved from the northern part of Nigeria, for those of you who know the story, to Abuja, the city capital, I was praying and seeking the face of the Lord to know what to do, and the Lord gave me an instruction to get the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, the map of Abuja, and the map of the world. And I used these four interceding and praying and speaking over the territory commanding the nations and commanding the territory to open up. You see, there are spiritual gates that open to every city and close. I wish I had the time would have examined the story of Jericho. The Bible says, now Jericho was shut. Hear what the Bible says. Nothing came in and nothing came out. That's not just a physical thing. There are spiritual realities like that so you can be in boston or cambridge but in the spirit you are not yet here and the territory will never deliver its riches to you have you seen a situation where people who are the um what they call them now they are not they are not of that region but they are the ones who who prosper and then the people who were born and bred there they never prosper it's true have you heard of any statement like, lift up your head? What gates and where are they? Those gates were not metallic objects. They were spirits because they replied. Who is this king of glory? Every region has gates. Every region has doors. If the two lift gates that open to a city do not open before you, your influence will never manifest. There are gifted people, some of you seated here, and you do not know why it looks like there are forces covering your influence. Do you believe what I'm telling you? In Acts chapter 12, when the angel came to take Peter out, the Bible says the first gate opened. The second gate opened. Watch this. Then he got to the iron gate that opens to the city. The iron gate that opens to the city. There is a gate that controls influence. If that gate is open in the spirit, the city will receive from you. There are many preachers who do not know this. So they can be anointed, beautiful churches, and yet no one will come because the gate that opens to the city is still closed. There are gates that until they are open, finances will never come. You can be as valuable as you can but these spirits will work things against you and finances will not come. Paul said, I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Favor desire to come to you. Help desire to come to you. Destiny help us desire to come to you, but Satan hindered them. And so in the place of prophetic intercession, you do not just intercede for yourself, but you intercede for others. Shifting the climate of territories. Let me tell you this. If God can find sufficient prophetic intercessors over Boston, over Cambridge, across America, you see why the devil is fighting prayer? Now you understand. He knows. He knows what prayer can do. If done with understanding. The Bible says the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. Make up your mind to pray. Find a prayer partner and be serious. And pray. Pray with passion. Pray with fire. 
intercede. Intercede for your loved ones. Some of them are not saved. Don't let them go to hell. Call their names as you pray. There are mothers who need to pray. You're a young lady, married or not, you lay your hands on your stomach and begin to pray. I will not give birth to a prostitute. I will not give birth to armed robbers. In the name of Jesus, I birth destiny changers according to Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6. I will make you exceeding fruitful. Are we together? Yes. It says, I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. Kings. You are in business, carry your documents and begin to prophesy. Speak over them. Don't say I'm an immigrant, I don't have any advantage. It's a lie. Take responsibility and pray. I tell you, pray. Write your proposals, but pray. Pray. The increase of the earth is for all. The Bible says even the king is fed by that which comes from the field. God is a God of portions. There's still your portion within here. It takes prayer and intercession to deliver your portion to you. Believe in the favor of God. If I come into your nation and I'm not favored and I return back, I will go for a retreat. I really will. It's not pride. It's the truth. Because the Bible says I'm blessed in the city and blessed in the nation. There has to be someone who God will raise who will sign that signature that his favor is still at work. This is how God works. Listen, you've allowed your destiny to just move like a man driving, not holding on to the wheels. It's time to take responsibility. We're going to spend a few minutes praying, but I want you to cry out in this, as we pray, I want you to pray for your loved ones, pray for your business, pray for your destiny, your children are misbehaving. It takes more than counseling. I respect counseling. But you get their pictures, get their names, and begin to shake every devil out of their minds. Shake every devil out of their lives. There are times that things are not working in your life. Turn the plates in your house upside down. That's not the time to eat yourself to defeat. Shut the door and begin to pray. You do not just become global by being valuable alone. I believe in being valuable. But I have learned that when spirits are against you, intelligence will not solve the problem. Did you hear what I said? When spirits are against you, and you believe me, I have prayed for many people, intelligent people, valuable people who cannot explain there's no justification for the level the heightened intellectual capacity they have versus the state of poverty suffering hardship pain depression and i tell them this one is no longer mathematics and intelligence and commerce and business take on your priestly regalia there is a spirit that wants to fight your destiny can we invest five minutes praying you're going to find a partner and for the next five minutes while they just charge the atmosphere in worship, I'd like you to pray. And for those who are falling online, whether it's midnight as it is in Africa or maybe evening or morning already in some part, it doesn't matter. It's time to pray. Pray in the spirit. Begin to make decrease over your life. It's time to shift this spiritual climate. Come on, someone. Connect to someone and begin to pray. You can sit, you can stand, you can walk around. Just take the next five minutes praying. By all means, do not be silent. Do not be silent. Do not be silent. Pray. Someone is praying. Pray. Pray. Shabrada balaka paranda karato sabrada gadabalas. Pray in the spirit. It's time to rise in the spirit.
Time to rise in the spirit. Time to take territories. Shalabaka paratosa brasa balakata. Prata gata prada gada barados yada. spirit of laziness cause the spirit of prayerlessness laxity in studying the word cause that spirit Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Please listen to me. Listen to me. I want us to pray. You are going to stretch your hand across any direction and begin to speak the spirits over this region. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we decree and declare. We are praying over America. We are praying over Cambridge. Praying over Boston. Praying over Massachusetts. We are praying. Come on. Make decree make decrees make decrees by the spirit we decree and declare over the spiritual climate every operation of demon spirits every operation of familiar spirits we dethrone spirits we dethrone orchestrations of darkness arsenals of darkness fighting the prophetic destinies of God's people, fighting the prophetic destiny of the church, we curse you by the blood of the eternal covenant. You're making decrees. You're making decrees. You're making decrees. Declare ye that thou mightest be justified. You're making decrees. You're making decrees. You're making decrees. You're making decrees. Sabaka parakato sabranda kata rakata prate ke palako sabras ke bash. You're making decrees. You're making decrees. You're making decrees by the power of the Holy Ghost. You're making decrees. You're making decrees by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. You are going to pray for yourself now. Some of you will marvel at what will begin to happen to you when you pray. The Bible says, every tree that has not been planted by my Father. Now listen. Jesus gave a parable and he said, the sower came and sowed wheat. But while men slept, a stranger came and sowed something too so you went to bed sound and you got up having traces of cancer someone has come to sow something you are going to pray right now if your body as the house of god is not a house of prayer it will be a den of robbers did you hear what i said if your body as the temple of the lord jesus christ is not a house of prayer it will be a den of robbers. You are going to pray that every orchestration of darkness against my life by the eternal, the blood of the eternal covenant, I come against it now. Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Make faith declarations. Save, heal, anointed, blessed. Hey, Pakosha Pakarotes Kayata. 
every orchestration of witchcraft every diabolic operations of darkness I come against it in the name of Jesus spying upon my liberty frustrating the manifestation of the Word of God over my life and destiny I come against you in the name of Jesus hallelujah listen listen please look at me please look at me <laughs> you see every activity of witchcraft works in partnership with elemental forces so the bible says the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night not a spirit the sun the moon your Bible says the stars fought for Deborah. Is that in your Bible? You see, Job said God will deliver you from six things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. He says in famine you will laugh because you have a covenant with the stones. The covenant with the stones. You know what that means? That means the earth should not fight you. Huh? Yes, the wind should not fight you. The elemental forces should partner with your progress, not to destroy you. That means anyone who makes enchantments in fraternity with any of these elemental forces, it should be null and void. Because you were given dominion even over the earth. You believe that? The stars fought for Deborah. That you can forbid the earth from fraternizing with demon spirits to destroy the program of God. No. No enchantment and no divination. No. It should not stand. Are we together? Now I want to pray for you. We have to work with time. I'm going to receive your request shortly, but I want to pray for you. There are many of you here you may not know. That the happenings and the occurrences around your life, negatively speaking, are demonic. He says, son of man, what seest thou? And he said, I saw four horns. He says, these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. Judah talks of your praise. Israel talks of your promise. Jerusalem talks of um, your covenant lifted themselves. He says, but I have sent four carpenters. Are we together? Many of you, embargoes of disfavor. You are a lovely person and yet people hate you for no reason. Some of you are suffering from all kinds of addictions. Some of you are suffering from depression. I don't know if it works. I was told we, we have that also in US, but in Europe, I mean, these young people, mental health, they are almost becoming like madmen as young people. You find a young, do you have it here? You think that is just a psychological problem? It is an onslaught of demon spirits to capture a generation and render them intellectually redundant. It's an agenda. It's not just a psychological phenomenon. Now, I don't downplay the intelligence and the contributions of psychology and all kinds of programs. I don't downplay, but I'm telling you, the real solution is that this, when a man was mad, Jesus drove a spirit from him. And the Bible says the man sat with Jesus in his right mind. When your mind is wrong, it's a spirit that made it wrong. An intelligent God would not design stupid people who behave and misbehave and do all kinds of things. No, it's a demonic thing. So if your child is suffering any of this, I'm encouraging you now that you have a responsibility to intercede. There are spirits. Young people just shooting themselves, killing themselves. No, it's not normal. People get depressed. They just write letters and hang themselves. You call that normal? Something is wrong. I want to pray for you now that everything that is inconsistent with the workings of God in your life huh? I want to pray 
You believe in the power of prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands right now. Every man, every woman here represented, my God, I just sense such glory. The anointing will be resting on many of you right now as I speak. Haras, ho siyana, ho salanda, brothers. Kilas, sobres, kibaranto shia. Krada barando segede batia. The Lord is speaking to me that there are some of you he's raising as saviors for your family. I'm seeing the number seven. That anointing is coming on you now. Seven of you. In the name of Jesus, let that grace rest upon you now. Let that grace rest upon you now. Let that grace rest upon you now. Please, I want you to bring out those people for me. Whether or not you are an usher, if I ask you, just bring them out. There's a reason why I ask you. Just bring them. I want to speak a word of prayer. Seven. This is the number I see in the spirit. Now, the Lord is showing me a lady. There's been a prevalent oppression of witchcraft in your family. And the Lord is asking me to pray. As I pray for you now, you're going to feel literally like fire, just burning. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit and that demonic influence, let that lady and her family go now. Let that lady help her. Let that lady and her family go now. Let that lady and her family go now. There's a reason why I ask that these people under the anointing be brought. Let that lady and her family go now. The Lord is showing me a lady, your family has been plagued with sicknesses and diseases. People just, it's been a trend. The power of God is coming upon you right now as you are listening to me. In the mighty name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you and bring to end every oppression. Bring to end every oppression. Bring to end every oppression. I'm hearing in the spirit, someone is going to shout under the anointing. It's a loud shout. This is by the spirit of God. Why? Do I curse every spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Curse every spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I curse every spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Release God's people now. It's time for you to enjoy the liberty that is in Christ. The Bible says, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Now, I want to pray for a set of people. There are some of you who are called into the ministry of prophetic intercession. The hand of God is coming upon you now. There is a fire. Help them. Prophetic intercessors. I release that mantle. I release that mantle. I release our ah, Help them. Hold that woman so she doesn't destroy herself. Hold her. Prophetic intercessors, I release you now. Step into that mantle. Step into that anointing. The spirit of prayer and supplication. The spirit of prayer and supplication. I release that anointing upon you now. In the name of Jesus. Can you hold the woman so she doesn't hit anything? My friend, please, someone just hold her. She'll hit the television or something. Please, always hold them, huh? Hallelujah. God is restoring dreams and visions. God is restoring dreams and visions. God is speaking to someone. Restoring dreams and visions. Receive that grace right now. Restoring dreams and visions. You will begin to have prophetic dreams. Encounters in your sleep. You will see things before they happen. You will see things before they happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. God is opening my eyes. And I'm seeing the vision of a door. 
and that door has a padlock on it. And the Lord is saying, this represents the destiny of many people. It's been shut. I want to open it by the power of prophecy. Every door that has been closed over your life, I speak to that door, Ephata, be open, be open, be open, be open, be open, be open, be open. Doors be open, financial doors be open, marital doors be open, career doors be open. In the name of Jesus. Be open. Be open. Hallelujah. We're wrapping up. I'm hearing in my spirit restoration. Restoration. I curse that spirit right now. In the name of Jesus. Let her go. I'm hearing in my spirit restoration. And I'm hearing I will restore. I don't know what you've lost. Relationships, monies. By the power of prophecy, receive restoration. Receive restoration. Receive restoration. Receive restoration. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me someone, now not to offend you, but your father practiced some kind of occultism. You know, some of these religions that people just conjure things and he practiced a lot of occultism while you were growing up and the Lord wants to set you free from the influence of that thing because till today you go to bed and you still find out interactions with strange and familiar spirits in the name that is above all names I don't know where that person is but be set free now you are the man you your father my God before he died in the name of Jesus, you are a great man of God. I pray for you. Everything that has come as a result of that, by the mercies of God, be set free right now. Be set free right now. In the name of Jesus, be set free right now. The Lord is raising teachers of the word. There is a mantle that is about to fall upon you. You will understand scripture with a level of intelligence that is not human. I don't know how many of those people are here, but I release that grace. Receive it now. That teacher mantle, receive it now. Prophetic revealers of scripture, receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. In one minute, I'd like you to open your mouth and mention everything you want the Lord to do in your life. While that is happening, can we have some ushers begin to collate the prayer requests? Do you have that already? Okay, please bring them forward quickly. While... Okay, pass it to the aisle. Everyone, lift your prayer request while you are praying. Please, let's pray. All those online you're following, make sure you are participating in the prayer. Just pass your request to the aisle, left or right. Please, someone help coordinate it. So let's have one person... Just pass it to the last person by your left or right. That's, that's what I'm saying. Pass it to the last person by your left or right. Let there be someone who is just receiving them. Some of you can help just receive it so that um, you put it in a basket. Those who have the basket, just lift it and let the people know you are there. Let's do that very fast while you pray in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. Hallelujah. Go ahead. It's a new season for you. A new prophetic season. We are going to be praying. Don't worry, you can put one basket. Yes, just leave one. You don't have to bring it out, Mona. Just put everything in one. You get what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, so everything in one and then you bring it here. We're praying. Make sure, are you, if you're yet to submit your request, just lift it up so that the ushers can help you. Let's do that very fast. Please help them, ushers, very fast, very fast. Very fast. 
How many of you believe in the favor of God? Ah, please believe in the favor of God. Can I release that grace upon you? Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. Favor. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands over everyone here. Let the mantle, the grace that makes for favor, let it rest upon you now. Shout a believing amen. Let it rest upon you now. Let it rest upon your family, your children, your spouse. Let favor speak over your academics in the name of Jesus. Do we have the request? Please, very quickly. Now, everyone, please stretch your hands towards me. Don't worry. Just, just leave the basket. Okay, beautiful. So just bring, yes. Please, everyone, stretch your hands and pray in the spirit, connecting from across the nations of the earth. If you sent in your prayer request, then have no fear. We already have it here. And we're going to be agreeing. I'll be releasing miracles from this place to the nations of the earth. Cambridge, Boston, any other part, America, and across the nations of the earth. I believe in a miracle-working God. Do we have all the requests? Anyone left? Okay, there's one. Very quickly. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands. Yeshua. Listen, for those of you who follow our ministries, our ministry, I have seen God move over these requests. I have seen phenomenal manifestations of his power. You know why we collate requests like this? It is not because you cannot pray to the Lord as an individual, but there is something called the covenant of answered prayer and I'm here to release my faith with you some of you have prayed you have fasted over issues your prayer request here is the most accurate representation of your desires and in Mark chapter 11 and verse 24 the Bible says what things soever ye desire he said, when ye pray. Okay, so here's what will happen. Once we are done with the prayer, please make sure that um, you return all of this. So someone, I know there was a phone here so that we don't misplace. And so let's have someone who would handle them. If any electronic uh, gadget was dropped here, please make sure that it gets to the people so that we don't have... Um... Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to bow my knees. You don't kneel. I'll do the kneeling for you. Paul prayed over the church in Ephesus and he bowed his knees to the God 
of our Lord Jesus Christ and began to make petition. I just spoke about the power of prophetic intercession. While I'm praying for you, all I want you to do is to stretch your hands and to receive by faith as you are praying in the Spirit. Afterwards, I'll make prophetic declarations and then we'll begin to wrap up. I want you to have testimonies. I want that yesterday and today that you will testify for the remaining part of this year. Hallelujah. Because God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Are you ready now? Stretch your hands while you pray in the spirit and I'll bow my knees as I pray. Thank you, Jesus. And for all of you who are connecting by internet, watching on Koinonia Global, I want you to believe, release your faith right now in the name of Jesus. Miracles are about to happen. The spirit of grace is about to visit people, families, territories, communities. Shabaros katafrande balako satebrest. Lika pereko tashala gregevos. Lempra kata parato safreske peleke paruziata. Embra taso zemeleke paruzga tebalash. Lekra pata karato safrege peleke tariata. Father, in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands over these requests and I pray by the power that is in the name of Jesus and based on the authority of scripture let there be miracles in the name of Jesus let there be miracles in the name of Jesus let there be miracles in the name of Jesus let there be supernatural testimonies in the name of Jesus May the Lord reverse impossible situations. May the Lord give you testimonies. For someone, perhaps yours is for the healing of your loved one. We release that healing right now. We release the jobs right now in the name of Jesus. Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I prophesy upon your people that these Egyptians you see today, that you will see them no more forever. 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 In the name of Jesus, you will see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you will see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. I prophesy it, you will see them no more forever. Listen, for some of you, the answers to this prayer require the ministry of destiny helpers. I decree and declare, whoever has been anointed to rise up and help you, I gravitate them towards your destiny. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For someone here, I avert the spirit of death. Shout a believing amen. I forbid the waster from coming to your home, coming to your children, coming to your business in the name of Jesus. And for everyone who has cried here as a result of something you've lost, I prophesy to you in the name that is above all names may my God restore may my God restore may my God restore in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now I want us together as a family of faith I want us to pray for Harvard University hallelujah I know that there are many other institutions around but particularly I want us to pray for Harvard University Lord restore that fire the fire and the grace are we together
the spirituality upon which Harvard was built, we pray that God, who is a covenant-keeping God, let there be restoration. Go ahead and pray. Pray for all those schools. Pray for your professors, your lecturers. Go ahead and pray. Let there be a restoration. Let there be a restoration. It will not just be a center of secular learning, but it will be a place of revival, a place of encounters. God will raise mighty men, mighty women in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. I want to encourage you, everyone, as you return home, trust God for grace to find any two people who will partner with you to begin consistent prayer every day. Form prayer chains. I know that there are many spiritual leaders in addition to all that you do. Sometimes you can agree as a spouse one hour at least every day. Maybe 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the night or you plan your week. Make up your mind to submit to the discipline of transformation through prayer. When you get up in the morning, leave social media. It will not run away. Stay with God and build capacity. Are we together? Don't just browse away your destiny from morning till night. Those things are good, but define them. Don't let them control you. Don't get up in the morning and all you are doing is just punching, seeing, watching and laughing. Drop it aside. Invest in your spirit, man. And then let me encourage you. Break away from profitless relationships. There are many of you, this is a prophetic word for you. You must sustain the courage in this season. The Bible says, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. It says his delight is in the law of the Lord, and upon that law he meditates day and night, that he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which yield its fruits in season, and whose leaf does not wither, then he says, whatsoever he doeth, prospers. That is such a man who will prosper. It is not every kind of man that will prosper. You have friends and people who hate God and hate your destiny. Don't fight them. Don't criticize them. But you must define your boundaries. Love your destiny enough to invest in quality, pro-kingdom relationships. Are we together? Don't give everybody access to your inner circle to pollute your passion, pollute your prayer life. Listen, it is your responsibility to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit. I'm not teaching you to antagonize, don't get me wrong. I'm not teaching you to fight people. I'm not teaching you to create prejudices. But you must be wise. Define your inner circles. Everybody cannot have access to your holy of holies. No. The Bible says, he that walks with the wise will be wise himself. Then it says, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Hallelujah. It is my desire that after these encounters, that the next time God grants us the grace to come around this region, we would see people on fire. Yeah. On fire. That many of you will credit that spiritual fire to these encounters that have happened here in the name of Jesus and I'm praying for you again that every anointing needed in your life in this season for your efficiency for your optimal function as a Christian as a witness may that anointing rest upon you now may that anointing rest upon you now I speak over those who are sick you came here sick in your body in the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands and I pray by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Be healed now. Amen. Migraines be healed now. Amen. 
blood conditions be healed now Amen. cancer dies from your body now Amen. sugar diabetes be healed now Amen. bone conditions be healed now Amen. respiratory problems be healed now Amen. back pain be healed now Amen. eye conditions be healed every situation that is not of God I command be healed from it now Amen. for in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. father I stand as your servant upon this ground you brought me here to deliver a lecture at Harvard but beyond that to stir up a fire Lord, I stand in partnership with everyone who loves Jesus within this region. The men and the women who labor in word and doctrine. The churches, regardless the denominations. Preachers, missionaries, apostles, prophets. And in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. And I speak to this region. Lift up your heads. O ye gates. Lift up your heads. O ye gates, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted ancient doors, that the King of glory will come into Cambridge, will come into Boston, will come into Massachusetts, in the name of Jesus. Let mantles that have been lost be recovered right now be restored right now in the name of Jesus let the purposes of God over this region continue to advance continue to advance for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed give Jesus a big hand clap big hand clap big hand clap in the name of Jesus big hand clap hallelujah those in front here in the name of Jesus I declare you healed delivered perfected you return with your testimonies in Jesus name just two important announcements and I'm done number one listen very carefully please number one um, I want to encourage you I know that there are many of you who some of these teachings when you go to our page Koinonia Global on YouTube I have preached several messages uh, that pertain to revival the moves of God please you can go get them download them listen to them for your spiritual edification hallelujah praise the name of the Lord and then of course it may interest you to know um, I know that many of you are already aware we're back in July for sound of revival <laughs> hallelujah so it's it's going to be an incredible time at Fourth Ward, Texas. We're using the Vikings Arena. And um, I know that, you know, it's, it's all sold out. So please, for those of you who have not, um, we're still working. Um, it was within a week, 14,000 people, everything. Um, so it's going to be a time of revival, awakening. Um, it will be a powerful time. For those of you who have tried to register, and it didn't work just be patient we have seen what we try to do um, we've exhausted everything we can um, uh, so we're trying to work out whatever it is that we can we're doing the same thing two days here in the US three sessions then we'll move to Canada fortunately the auditorium we're using for Canada has um, space for overflow so when we exhausted the quota we had to get another overflow for 5,000 people again so this is what God is doing across the nations. And um, you can feel free to connect with us by the grace of God. But I want you to know that um, I love you from the depth of my heart. And I, I believe in God's prophetic hand upon your lives. And it's been my joy contributing to your spiritual growth. My encouragement for you is that you don't just get excited with these two days and then plunge back to your former self. Make up your mind that you will take this seed and run with it. Listen to this teaching again and again in prayer and then connect with what God is doing. 
I have my final lecture at Harvard tomorrow in the morning or afternoon by 12. Yes, I'm, I'm sh there's no room again. My apologies. It's all packed. So, um, but I'm sure that would, would be able to air it on Koinonia Global. And so if you can, um, before, while it is live or shortly after, um, so afterwards, we'll be wrapping up tomorrow and then by Friday, we're back. But I want you to know that I enjoyed my time with you. Thank you for the honor. Thank you for the love. Thank you so very much. And um, you, have, you have honored me. May my God honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. And to Bishop and your dear wife, thank you. Thank you sincerely. Thank you. Hallelujah. I may not have a chance to do this, but Prof, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, let's give a big God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so um, I didn't make the altar call now. I feel guilty already. Let me allow someone as my last function here tonight, someone who needs to come to Jesus. I'm an advocate of salvation. You need Jesus. You are in this place or connecting online. I just need one person who is sincerely saying, Apostle, if you will give me a chance, I want to make it right with Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Someone is coming. Come. 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 Let's encourage them. Give them a big God bless you. Come. 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 God bless you. Yeshua. Come. Yeshua. Thank you. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the boldness to walk up here and declare the Lordship of Jesus over your life. The wisest decision any man can make in this side of God's kingdom is the decision to receive the life of Jesus in total surrender. There's no other decision that is wiser than this. In order of spiritual priority, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life everlasting. Thank you again for coming. May I request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of total surrender. Say this after me, but I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I'm a child of God born again I go forward ever and backward never amen hallelujah keep your beautiful hands and I speak over your life don't be ashamed of your tears there is joy in heaven joy in heaven over the salvation of one sinner Father, thank you for these precious brothers and sisters who are here. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I pray for you. 
that the grace that keeps men, may that grace be at work in your life. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. And based on the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. You go from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Now, please look up for one moment. You'll be given a card like this. Do we have, um, okay, beautiful. So, on your way to your seat, you would receive this card. Please do well to fill the information and just slip it to any of the ushers. They have, um, they're wearing the shirt, welcome home. And um, so please do well to just complete the form and then give it to them. And I'm sure they'll follow up on you after now. Thank you. Congratulations. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. One more time, dear people, thank you so much. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Kateka Post. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.